aviation industry has enjoyed an impressive safety record with the rate of accidents per flight on a decline for decades. However, in recent years the safety performance has stagnated. Still, for every flight that goes wrong, there are several thousand that go well. With those numbers it's easy to think there's no longer much to learn. Unfortunately, history has shown that fatal accidents are often preceded by normal and successful work. In complex organizations, the absence of negatives can satisfy. In other words, the organization thinks there's nothing to learn. In fact, there is much more to be gained from understanding why things go well than reviewing what went wrong. I'm here at the headquarters of Cafe Pacific to discuss how we as an airline learn from our operation. To enhance flight safety, ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, mandates the implementation of a flight data analysis program called FDAP. It's a process to analyze recorded flight data and monitor for trends and forms part of the safety management system. Up to today, this is how most airlines still measure their safety. But does it tell the whole story? The Quick Access Recorder QAR stores roughly 1,000 parameters every second, some of them at an even higher rate. These data sets then get downloaded from the aircraft and filtered for 30 to 50 trigger values and analyzed at the Operational Safety Department. Visual models can reconstruct the flight, but they don't explain how pilots got there in the first place. There's limited information on weather, also unrecorded are requests to pilots from air traffic control. Crucially, FDAP does not include the pilot, the human operator of a complicated machine in a complex environment in the story told. Is it human error that caused the aircraft to end up in an undesirable situation? I asked Peter Hudson, the risk manager of flight operations. Let's start with the fallacy of human error. Um, human error is a natural condition of being human. People make mistakes. Even your very best people make mistakes. Um, and it also is usually a symptom of something deeper within your system. There's, 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 you know, when, when you're looking at human error, you're looking at context, and context matters because context drives behaviour, and the system around around you is the context. Humans are not a con not a problem to control; they're a solution to harness. And um, and when you empower them to to tell their stories, to have psychological safe space to tell their stories, um, you will get the rationality. This is the Canarsie approach at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York, flying a visual turn onto final runway 13 left. The Canarsie approach often triggered many alerts on FDAP. Let's look at how giving the pilot psychological safe space to tell their stories has helped. There was difficulty with the 747, that you know, the way the aircraft was, was being flown. It was just a very difficult approach. We actively asked the pilots to start reporting in area safety reports. We also created this sort of culture of trust where we had this open reporting style. We were able to have pilots come forward and say, well, look, you know, we were facing this, this, this demand and pressure or, you know, there was this interaction and workflow or that we were making these trade-offs and they just weren't working. We had a lot of learning around why things were going wrong, but we also got a lot of learning about why things were going right. What happens is when you decentralise accountability for performance on the line to the subject matter experts and the field experts, it's a very powerful outcome. And all we did is guide and mentored that accountability, built it into training uh, programs. We allowed pilots to practise it. We got a superb outcome. And our FDAP results improved dramatically. If we had taken a retributive approach to that, you know, we would have said, look, you broke the rule, we're going to punish you for that. Um, we would not have learned anything. We have a policy of no punitive action will be taken against any, any operator or any pilot um, that makes an unintentional error um, because we recognise that as a natural part of the human condition. The importance of how an organisation creates that culture of psychological safe space to learn is, is essential. 
The success of conversations with pilots, like those over the Canarsie approach, led to a regular process, the Operational Learning Review. Here at CAFE's headquarters, pilots every day had to work via the main walkway known as the street, much to the delight of Pete McCarthy. The nirvana for me is going down to the, the street down there, seeing one of our pilots and saying, hey, you know, you've just flown back from New York and nothing happened, can we talk about it? Because if nothing happened, it means that, that lots did happen. And what actually happened was they managed all the situations, they managed all the ambiguity, they managed all the trade-offs that were required in order to have a successful flight. So actually, in their mind, that non-event is a, is a big event to me because that's where most of our learning can come from. An operational learning review is a, an opportunity for us to have a discussion or a chat with the uh, frontline experts and gain insight from that as to what the real work looks like that they're doing so we can understand work as done rather than work as imagined in, in the environment. And what we gain is people's mindset, people's thinking, people's behaviours and people's attitudes. And they aren't things that you could normally get through observed behaviour or through even you know, just reading an air safety report. I think the operational learning review is only successful because we build trust. And that trust is essential for the sharing of the information that's going to make us safer. It is clearly understood that any improvement in our safety performance is a product of a learning process. The frontline workers are the experts in their field, and unless we try to understand how daily work gets done, most of the time without anything going wrong, we won't find out how success itself is achieved. Machines by themselves are not safe. It is humans that generate safety every day by their work. Human resilience fills the gap between work as imagined and work as done and it is people that make a complex system resilient through positive capacity and adaptation to a complex and changing world.